When the Chill Caesar revealed two brand new specials, a lot of people in the community were thinking, wow, we might have too many of these. Which sounded like a great idea for a video topic, except my take on it is one sentence long. So that didn't work out. However, while I was thinking about that, it did get me to come up with the idea, what if we did have way less specials? Eventually, we're gonna have a Splatoon 4, and as many amazing specials as we have throughout this series, there is no way we're gonna be able to get a lot of them. So from Splatoon 1 through 3, I decided to try to cut down that list to only 10 returning specials. That way, whatever new game comes out would have plenty of room to add some more new original ideas. This ended up being a video that was stuck in the planning phase for a a long time. When you have to narrow it down to just 10, there are some really tough choices, but I'll do my best to explain my logic and hopefully make as many people happy as possible. Let's get into the list and what specials I would bring back for the sequel. Subscribe if you enjoy, and let's get started. So I'm going to put these specials into mostly arbitrary categories to make sure we have a decent amount of each one, starting with what I like to call in-your-face aggressive specials. This is the Baller, Triple Splashdown, which would obviously be over Splashdown anyway, Reef Slider, Kraken Royale, which would be over the regular Kraken, and Ultra Stamp. I think we should narrow it down to two on this list, and let's get the most obvious two out of the way. Baller has a whole myriad of design problems, isn't really that satisfying to use, felt incredibly weak, and was balanced poorly at the end of Splatoon 2 when they made weight class effective. Anyone who played Custom Expo got to have the joy of having a worse special than any other Baller weapon. On top of that, a special we'll get to later has a lot of Baller properties anyway. The second most obvious one is Reef Slider. This is the second Splashdown Reef work, and definitely the worst one. It's a bit more interesting of a concept than Baller to me, but one that has really fallen flat throughout this game, so I don't think I'm gonna miss it. I don't think Splatoon 2 me would believe I'm saying this, but my first candidate for Splatoon 4 is actually Triple Splashdown. Now, Splashdown does have one factor that normally I don't really care about, but does matter when going to the next game, which is the coolness factor. Splashdown was already one of the most amazing concepts they ever had visually, but the fists on top of it just adds so much of an awesome factor to it. On top of that, the special's in a decent spot balance-wise, mostly just needs reverts of nerfs it got from Splatoon 2 to 3, is amazingly iconic, and fits as a fast, up-close option that's really simple to use. An easy choice. The other two are very similar to each other, which was one of the hardest choices to narrow down to pick only one of them. In fact, so difficult, I asked for some input from Twitter, which ended up surprisingly to me, siding with Kraken. This was the special I was leaning to as a whole, though. I know a lot of people don't like Kraken, and it definitely has some problems. I would like the invincibility to be reworked, for instance, but it's in a much better spot balance-wise and is significantly more iconic, whereas Stamp has never been in a good spot balance-wise across two different games. On top of that, I like how much Kraken has to earn its value. You're taking away a player that can paint and affect the map into a squid that has to do something more than just chasing one person around, because that's just making it a 3v3. They have very little time to do it, have to get very close to people and have exploitable end lag. It creates a very interesting game of cat and mouse that, in my opinion, feels really fun to play on both sides. And while it definitely needs some tweaks, considering it also won the popularity poll and the reasons listed here means I think it could actually be the better pick for Splatoon 4. Next up is Recall Specials, which has Inkjet and Zipcaster. This is the fastest category, I'm keeping both of them. Not only are these some of the most iconic and cool looking specials, but they also have a lot of value in the single player. You can build really really cool and unique levels around each of these, especially Zipcaster. Both of them are pretty healthy for the game, both in design and balance, and I think recalls are genuinely a cool concept. There's very little to say about these, and it's really hard to imagine a Splatoon game without either of them, so I would love it if both of them came back. Next up, support specials. We have Wavebreaker, Big Bubbler, Ink Armor, Bubbler, Tacticooler, Echolocator, and Ink Vac. This is another one where we're cutting down to two specials, and there is a lot of tough choices here. Let's get some of the obvious ones out of the way. Ink armor and bubbler, get out of here. We are not messing with chainable armor or invincibility again. We've learned our lesson from how that looked in Splatoon 1 and 2, and we're not gonna risk it again. Splatoon 3 has shown that you very much do not need a special like this in the game. Big bubbler will go out of the way next. While I think this special has some interesting concepts to it, especially having a beacon inside of it, I think a giant HP shield just has more problems than answers, and there are just more cool options support-wise. Speaking of which, the first special here 
tier we'll keep is Inkvac. Inkvac and Bubbler were pretty much always going to be cut down to one in my eyes, but Inkvac is easily the better option. It's way more satisfying to use as a super unique concept, has more playmaking power, and a lot more depth behind it while having less design problems than Big Bubbler. I've talked a ton about how Inkvac can incentivize people to play supportively, and this is something about that special I really like and want to see back. So that leaves Wave Breaker, Echolocator, and Tacticooler. We can obviously get rid of Echolocator since Wave Breaker is a way more interesting rework of that special anyway. But Wave Breaker versus Tacticooler is a really tough choice. Wave Breaker is one of the only specials that can directly locate people, which is pretty useful. It's insanely well designed. It's a bit weak balance-wise, but it's possibly the easiest one to fix. And has great synergy with a lot of weapons, giving a lot of potential for what kits it could be on. Tacticooler, on the other hand, arguably has has more problems. If cooler is good, you pretty much need one weapon in your comps with it. It's not super satisfying, though compared to specials like Ink Armor, it doesn't have that chain ability problem since people have to grab it. And the biggest argument for Tacticooler, it's kind of been the face of one of the best and most diverse metas we've ever had. Now, in a new game with some things tweaked and new maps, maybe we don't need it, but it's really hard to say for sure. What I would personally want to see, though, is Splatoon 4 reworking Cooler into some kind of brand new mechanic. I'm not entirely sure how this would work, and maybe that's something I'd have to talk about for another time, but I think it would fit a lot better if it wasn't required to be one of your four specials. That could allow all the positives of Tacticooler while getting rid of pretty much all of the negatives. In a perfect world, I'd assume that would happen, and Wavebreaker would be the second special. If you want to be cynical though, Tacticooler would be the second special. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to assume something like that happens with Tacticooler, because this is my video, and I want to hope Splatoon 4 is as good as it can be. So Wavebreaker and Inkvac will be the two returning specials. Next up is long range aggressive specials with Trizuka, Inkzuka, and Crab Tank. Again, Inkzuka could be ruled out as Trizuka is basically a better version of that outside of the startup. Unfortunately though, I think we gotta cut one of these. And while Zuka is insanely iconic and I have a lot of bias to it because, you know, Splatoon 1 player, I'm gonna actually give this one to Crab Tank. Yeah, it was really broken when the game came out, but once that was balanced, it's been one of the best specials for the game health-wise. There's a ton of unique players Plays. It fits really well with the game's aesthetic. It carries a lot of attributes of other specials like Baller that are much more healthy. Its firing modes are very satisfying. Its counterplay is really cool. It's really nice as an entry tool, and it works with pretty much any weapon, giving a high potential for uniquely fun kits. It's just really hard to argue with Crab. It's one of the best design specials in the series, so I have to pick it over Zuka. Finally, is the category that needs the most amount of cuts. Displacement specials. This has Killer Whale, Killer Whale 5.1, Tena Missiles, Super Chump, Triple Ink Strike, Vanilla Ink Strike, Booyah Bomb, Bomb Launchers, yes, all of them, Splatter Color Screen, and Stingray. First off, I'm gonna cut off literally anything with Global Range. I think that just generally, Global Range is a bad design decision. I think that having people use specials close enough to where they can interact with other people is just generally smart. And now that we've had metas without Global Range displacement specials, I think it's clear we don't need them. This knocks off Original Killer Whale, I'm so sorry, Killer Whale 5.1, Tena Missiles, the Original Ink Strike, and of course, Stingray. Gray. Not like it had a chance anyway. Next on the cutting floor would be the bomb launchers. These have a lot of problems outside of just being kind of bland. Ideally, these could be reworked into some kind of multi-bomb launcher, but at that point, I think it would be enough to be arguably its own special, which is outside the concepts of this video. Bomb launchers naturally need a ton of weapon kits because there is a ton of different bombs. Because of that, you also have meme bomb launchers, which are really funny for the first five matches and then really weak after them, looking at you, auto bomb rush. And honestly, Honestly, I just think we can have way better concepts than this, so too many problems to work with. And next on the cutting list is Splatter Color Screen. While its ability to block people's vision is unique and cool as a counter to long range, it adds a ton of visual clutter, is pretty weak as a whole, and has accessibility issues, even after the fix. Which means despite its strengths, I think it's still a pretty easy candidate to leave behind. For our first candidate to put in the game is Triple Ink Strike versus Booyah Bomb, as these two are very similar. And honestly, Booyah Bomb's an easy pick for me. Triple Ink Strike does look pretty cool, but a Spirit Bomb where they literally upgraded it between games to have Super Saiyan 2 Lightning when fully charged, I'm sorry, that will always be one of the coolest things I've ever looked at. On top of that, it's better balanced, it works on way more weapons, it has way more versatility and flexibility, and I think it feels more satisfying to use, so it's a pretty easy win here. That just leaves Ink Storm and Super Chump. Ink Storm is a displacement special with a very light amount of displacement, so it's pretty healthy for the game, and it has some nice utility with a lot of different weapons to combo with it. While I personally really like the idea of summoning an Ink Storm on people, like that's just a cool concept, I have to say that Super 
jump is a lot more interesting. The idea of a special that more blocks for you and puts down immediate paint is pretty interesting. I think it works on a lot more weapons, there's more depth to it, and especially if they rework it a little bit, the concept of a fake super jump landing is just way more interesting to me than anything in this entire category. So I think a slightly tweaked super jump could have a lot of stuff going for it, and ultimately I think this special is easily the most healthy displacement one we have in the game already, so it would be my candidate to bring back. So there we go, that's the full list of specials on screen right now, and hey wait, that's only nine specials. So you might have noticed I've left a special out of this discussion entirely, and that is Bubble Blower. I guess while technically fitting more in the supportive role, can honestly be used as an entry tool, aggressive power, has a lot of different stuff to it. The special was by far the most interesting thing they put into Splatoon 2, and while it has a bit of a negative reputation due to a certain Instapop combo, if that was heavily nerfed alongside the special's duration, I think we could have a very interesting special. This is a really cool concept that fits well with the world of the game, I think could work on a lot of different weapons, bring some interesting varied utility, and honestly, I think it could be reworked without changing it too much. In fact, I did an entire video on it. It was possibly my favorite thing to work on last year. So if you want to see more info about it, check it out in the description. But with that being said, that would be my lineup of 10 specials to bring to Splatoon 4. Do you agree with my list? And if not, what would you change? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you all next time.